The name of our new assessment is the Access to Instruction and Measurement. This was very, very deliberate. Instruction should come first. Accessibility and then instruction. So in the past, Washington hasn't had truly sort of clearly articulated learning progressions for kids across the board. So what we've been able to do is build that out. Right, so we have an instructional foot to put forward. So we're going to talk about that first. We'll talk about learning progressions. Right? We'll talk about things that can give you um, the opportunity to aid in your planning, whether it's your IEP writing, and to look ahead. So the first things we'll talk about, we're calling our access frameworks, and those are sort of instructional spaces. So we'll have to kind of sit with that. So that sort of separation or divorce of instruction and measurement hasn't really happened here. So we'll get to do that for the first time. The second thing we'll talk about is sort of how we're measuring those skills. And you'll see how that sits. So again, a lot of this is new. Um, I've had the privilege of working in four different states across my teaching career. Um, I taught for nine years, and then I worked at higher ed for four before I came here. And Washington, for whatever reason, for 15 years had the same instrument. So it's a little bit harder, I think, to sort of be willing to jump and see a different shift. But We'll get there. It is a different shift, though. Okay. So this is how we'll walk through things today. I'm going to give you a really high-level overview. I think it's helpful when something's new to just kind of dip your toes in all the pieces. So that's the first thing we'll do. I'm going to tell you about our components. So the first one is sort of that instructional or planning component, and the second one is how we'll pick up the measurement. Talk to you about the actual structure, how we're going to deliver it. So online delivery does not mean we're delivering it to the student online, so we're not having a student interface online, but we're giving you a mechanism to deliver it online where the system will allow you to interact with it and submit it and will give you the item pieces that you need online. And I think that's going to be a wonderful tool. And our steps for administration. So the hope is as we go through here today, we will answer these sort of like scholastic news, our five W's and our how. So just to start out, who is this for? It's our students with significant cognitive challenges. It's the same group of students who took the WASP portfolio for the most part. Okay. What is it? It's a new alternate assessment. Why? We changed our standards. Right? We moved from state-based standards to common core standards. Where online is where this will sit. And when now? So this school year, November 1 through April 10 is our administration window. Okay. So even if after today you are so thrilled and you are so excited that you just want to go out and measure everything in the world that your students can do, you can't. You have to actually wait until November 3rd because November 1st is a Saturday and we will all be recovering from our various Halloween activities and you can't do anything. Right? It gives us some breathing time, some time to look at things to get into it. And November 3rd can come and go and you can do nothing. Okay? You don't have to. It's just when things open up and begin. So we're going to talk about things in two separate pathways today that will dovetail. And you'll see that. So it's again, it's kind of coming along for the ride. The first is the administration. So that, when I think about the administration part, I think about that's how we're working with our students. Right? And delivery is I'm thinking about that sort of online environment in terms of how are we getting the items and the data delivered. 